All right, folks, coming up is getting the mill on the stand and looking like that, as well as I'm getting started with the electrical, so um, mapping out all the circuit breakers in my house and figuring out how I can get electricity to this thing. All right, folks, so it is day two. I am still at it. Um, here we've got the mill on the engine hoist. Um, the biggest snag we ran into was that this style of hoist doesn't fit under the base. So I went ahead and did what John Grimsmo did, put it up on some blocks. He used fancier aluminum like discs, but I'm just using some two by fours that I cut up. Um, the one thing that he did that I didn't really feel that comfortable about was he just used some two by fours and some long ones to um, use like a pry bar to lift the sucker up and take the blocks out. I went ahead and rented for 25 or 35 bucks a day over at Home Depot. They got pallet jacks and uh, it'll go up high enough. If not, I'll just put a block on each one of the, the forks and uh, get it down that way. That'll be nice and easy. So I've got the engine hoist here and from the videos, it looks like it works. I'm just a little concerned that I'm not gonna be able to go up high enough. So I've got the chain, chain so that it's all the way down uh, as, as low as it'll go there. Um, so we're gonna give it a try and hopefully it all works out. All right, folks, so it is on the stand. I apologize for not recording it, but sometimes when you're doing stressful stuff like that, you don't want the added stress of people watching you even if they're in cyberspace. So this is what I got. This is kind of the setup that finished it off. We got the stand on a couple two by fours and a half inch piece of aluminum. So that was enough to get this engine hoist underneath it. Um, this bar up here I showed you, the hook is like all the way as tight as it'll go. And then we've got this on one ton um, because that was as far as we can go and still be safe because this thing weighs like 1,500-ish pounds, uh, maybe a little bit more. But came in from the, this would be the right side of the machine as you're facing it and seemed to work. We pretty much just fought it a little bit with it in the air, shimming it around until we could get all the bolts started. So that's where we're at now. All the bolts are in place. We're going to go ahead and unbolt the engine hoist, back it out, and then we will grab the, uh, the pallet jack and put this thing on the ground. All right, guys, I apologize. I have been super lazy about recording this. I keep getting more and more impatient and just rolling with it. But at this point, I have the splash shields on. Um, the mill is all leveled out and everything. I think the next step is going to be to hook up all the coolant stuff. And then, I don't know what from there, maybe electrical. But yeah, it's all together. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's what it looks like so far. So um, these weren't super bad to put on, but not super great either. Um, biggest thing was just trying to get back to some of the bolts and everything, but not too bad. It was doable. All right, folks. So today I am going to try and get some um, wiring and circuit breakers mapped out in my house because I'm looking to remove one of my circuit breakers from my panel so that I have room to add a double pull, double throw. So right here is my box right now. And as you can see, I've got one spot at the bottom that's open still. The rest are full. What's got me curious though is I've got some that say weird stuff like dedicated modem and dedicated computer. And some of that stuff I don't think is being used. And so I've got my daughter upstairs in one of our bedrooms with a bunch of night lights. And the idea is that I'm going to start switching off breakers and when we figure out which one controls that room we'll go ahead and mark it down so we know exactly i've got a little little map drawn up here so we can mark down exactly what breaker goes to what room and see which ones we can eliminate hopefully there's at least one i think there might be three that i can eliminate so we've got a sweet setup here we got a bunch of night lights up there and then we got walkie talkies so she can tell me when the lights go out so here we go all right i'm going to start shutting off breakers Okay, lights and um, the ceiling light? Yes. Alright, thanks. I'll turn it back on now. Be turned on. Alright, so after going through room by room with my daughter, um, putting up with some of her shenanigans on the walkie-talkie, and her getting bored, and me just deciding to finish it myself, I've established that two of these breakers 
are not being used. Uh, it's those two I mentioned earlier, the dedicated modem, dedicated computer. The modem one goes to an outlet in my furnace room and that is all that I can find. Computer one, I couldn't find anything that was tied to it. So um, the thought was if you go through every room, um, turn everything on, plug a nightlight into every outlet and start shutting off breakers and then you know someone radios you and tells you, hey, the lights just turned off, you can mark, okay, I need to keep that, that breaker because it controls the lights in that room. Um, I consolidated a big list, so these are my breakers that are being used, these are the ones that are not, uh, pretty basic, and from there, so now we can go through, uh, hopefully move some of these breakers around so I can get two of them side by side that are blank, add a 50 amp breaker there at 220, and then send that out to the garage into a sub panel, and that'll power my mill, my air compressor, and hopefully a welder, but just not at the same time. Um, one big question I had, and I had an electrician come out, is this is only 100 amp service coming into the house, and I mean, you look at the panel, 100 amps, and the panel's full. So, and if you add it up, it's ridiculous. It's easily over 200 amps. There's some fancy formula he didn't really get into, but uh, he pretty much said as long as you're mindful of not using all the big ticket items at the same time, you should be okay. Uh, one big one is the air compressor, um, the actual big outside unit. And that's over on the side of the house, and it is fed directly with uh, a breaker before it ever comes into this 100 amp panel. So I think I'm good there. The other ones are like the stove, the dryer. Yeah, those are the two big ones, the stove and the dryer. And uh, I don't see a time when I'll be outside milling, since I do it late at night, with my air compressor running, where my wife is trying to cook and um, do laundry all at the same time. So I think I'll be okay. A lot of these other ones, you know, they're 15 amp breakers for your outlets and everything and I mean there's very few things other than like vacuums or something to that effect that actually pulls that kind of power you know normally cell phone chargers and lamps and everything they're pulling an amp or two tops so or milliamps so I think I should be okay uh, even the 50 amp breaker that's going out to the garage I don't think I'll ever be pulling anything close to that um, it's just nice to have that capacity if I end up needing it let's go out to the garage I'll show you where I'm at with the mill so Tormach should be pretty easy to wire up. It's got a little cord here, and at the end, all you're looking for is single phase 220. So I'll have to read in the book which one's which on here. You should have two hots in the ground or a neutral. I forget. So from what I showed you earlier, mapping out my um, breaker panel, I'll have to run those two wires or those two breakers. So you'll get two hots. I'm going to run them up to this wall over here by my air compressor and put a sub panel in over there. That way, air compressor, mill, and that Miller welder can all be plugged in. So that's about all I got for this week. So hopefully next week we will have this thing running. So that, that is the goal. Um, I've already got my shopping cart um, on Home Depot filled with electronics for my to get power to this thing. And so, yeah. Yeah, hopefully she'll be up and running. See you next time.